Can you make cheap, bad soil better by simply adding some fertilizer? We've all been there before. You go to the garden center, buy some cheap soil on sale, plant out your garden, only to find that your plants have grown out all sad and stunted. So in this video, we're going to answer the question and see if adding a scoop of fertilizer can save your dead soil. For the setup of this experiment, I took the bottom two performers and the top two performers from the previous test. So for the bottom two performers, I have EB Stone, Raised Bed and Potting Mix, Kellogg, Patio Plus. And for the top two performers, I have the Vigro All-Purpose Potting Mix and the Miracle Grow Potting Mix. Now, what we're going to do is set up three grow bags for each soil type. And what they're going to have is one is going to have nothing. It's going to serve as a control, just like the last experiment. And then another one is going to have a full dose of synthetic fertilizer. The third bag is going to have a full dose of an organic based fertilizer, in this case, the down to earth all purpose mix. Now, the goal of this experiment is to find out whether you could take a low performing bag of soil and make it perform as good or even better than something that we know already does well. Now let's get into the plants that we're using. It is going to be cabbages. I have 12 identical cabbages to go into this experiment. They're all the same variety, grand prize. Now the fun thing about using a cabbage for this test is that at the end, we're gonna weigh every single one and we'll see just how much impact each one of these tests had. Before we add any fertilizer, I have to fill all these containers up with the soil. What I'm going to do here is make sure that I fill each one all the way to the top. And if I have any big clumps of stuff, I'm going to break it up so we get a nice even fill of each soil bag. All of the bags have now been filled with soil and it's time to add the fertilizer. So first up, we have this shake and feed, which is our conventional or synthetic fertilizer. The interesting thing about this one is it does have a few organic amendments, kelp, earthworm, feather meal, and bone meal, but those are just supplements. The main actual NPK is coming from synthetically derived urea, phosphorus, things like that. So the way this is measured is it's by the container size it says for a 12 inch container, which is what these five gallon bags is, I need three tablespoons. Three tablespoons is equivalent to one and a half ounces because each half ounce is a tablespoon. So there's three tablespoons right there. I'm gonna go ahead, sprinkle it into the top of my container, and I'm going to work it into this top layer only. The reason why I'm not mixing it all the way through the soil is because if I did, every time I watered, the stuff on the bottom is just going to leach away. So that's all we're doing. We're mixing the top layer with all that fertilizer. And now this bag is ready to go. Next up, we have the organic fertilizer, which is a 462. And actually, just for comparison, this one is a 1248. So they do have different numbers, but the dosage is also different. For this one, according to the package, I actually need anywhere from five to 10 tablespoons for this bag. So what I'm going to do is just fill this all the way, which is equivalent to eight tablespoons. So there we have the eight tablespoons. I'm gonna do the same thing, sprinkling on top and then mix it into the surface. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the fertilizer to all of the rest of the bags. And then after that, I'm going to be adding a label for organic or conventional. That way I know, but I'm going to be mixing these up so you guys won't have any clue which one got fertilizer and which one was a control. All the fertilizer has been applied and now I'm just planting out all of these identical cabbages. Now in terms of prediction, I'm expecting that these two over here, the top performers, actually might not do as well with the fertilizer added. The reason why I say that is because they both already have some amount of fertilizer included and too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Now in terms of the lower performing soils, my prediction is that the two that had fertilizer will probably match the controls of these two more highly performing soils. Now, once I get all these cabbages in, I will hook them all back into that same irrigation system as last time so that they each get the exact same water every time. And we'll check back in a few weeks and see how we're doing. This experiment has turned out quite interesting because over on this side, these two groups of three look pretty equal. That's kind of what I was hoping and predicting was that even the best soil should be matched by adding a little bit of fertility to it. But on this side, I'm starting to suspect that these might be the worst quality soils because this one and the one on the far end there are substantially smaller than not only their compatriots here, but the other groups entirely. So there are some clear pullaways here. I can't tell, I don't remember, it is blind to me, which one's organic, which one's synthetic, but there are some differences, like this one looks more vigorous than that one, and that one looks the least vigorous. So very interesting to see. Soon I'm gonna have to take these covers off because these plants are getting too big, and we're gonna put some hoops and cover this entire area because we don't want any pests to mess up this experiment. But so far, things are looking quite interesting. It has been a few months since we first set up this experiment and now we are finally ready to see the results. Just a quick recap, we have four different types of soil 
in groups of three. And what we did is we have a control, a synthetic fertilizer, and an organic fertilizer. So control has nothing added. And now what we're going to do is collect every cabbage, weigh them, compare them visually, and see what differences we could discern from this fertilizer experiment. And we're gonna get started over here on the far right side. The first one we're looking at is that raised bed mix that I added in. And there are definitely some differences here. So right here, this is the one that got the organic treatment. So we'll set that aside. This is the conventional. And then this one is just the soil as it is. Control, synthetic, organic. What are the differences? Well, the organic one is definitely the smallest overall. But the thing I noticed was that the head actually feels very dense and tight. The conventional one feels very sloppy, loose, like there's air holes, as well as the control there. Now, the other thing I'm noticing is that there isn't any huge aphid pressure maybe a little bit on this leaf right here, but now let's go ahead and weigh them. Organic is one and a half pounds. Conventional is two pounds, just a hair over. And then the control here, one and three quarters pounds. So the one that got synthetic fertilizer was definitely the biggest. The organic was the smallest overall, but I think in a normal condition, this one feels tighter. I think that would be the better eating cabbage in the long run. When I flip these cabbages over, I realized that the one that had extra synthetic fertilizer actually has a ton of aphids all over the bottom. This one has a very small amount, and that's actually to be expected if you over fertilize, you could often get aphid issues, and that's exactly what I think is happening here. The next one we're looking at is the patio mix from Kellogg's. This is a soil that has done me dirty in the past, so no surprises here. These all look pretty terrible, I have to admit. The one right here is the conventional fertilizer, and it looks like a joke. I don't even know if it's worth weighing it. It is so covered in aphids, it's actually a bit gross. So we'll set that one aside. Nobody's eating that, that's for sure. Then we have the control here, which looks not that impressive either, but at least it doesn't have any aphids. So again, too much fertilizer can definitely be a bad thing. That's one thing that this has shown already. And then over here we have the organic one, which actually looks the best. So that's interesting to see from this soil. Let's weigh them and see what it looks like. And this is weighing in at just over half a pound. And this guy is weighing in at three quarters of a pound. And then finally the organic one, which definitely is the largest, just over a pound and a half, probably like 1.6. Now, one thing I wanna show you guys real quick here is that if you look at this cabbage, it's pretty green. There's no tinges of purple or anything like that. But this one here has all this purpling through the leaves. And that is a common sign of nutrient stress, probably potassium or phosphorus. Whereas this one got absolutely destroyed by the synthetic fertilizer and just attracted aphids in the end. So organic definitely pulled ahead on this one. This one is the Vigro Potting Mix, one of the top two contenders from our last experiment. Right here is the control. It is a honestly nice looking head of cabbage here. Feels like it's going to weigh pretty, pretty heavy. Then we have the organic, which I think is going to be the biggest in this case. That's very interesting to see. And then we have the synthetic, which once again has the most aphids by far. So let's weigh these out and see what we get. Let's measure the synthetic one first. And I want to mention right here, that is literally a pile of raining aphids. So this thing is going to have some extra weight from all the aphids for sure. And it's going to be weighing two and three quarter pound. Next up, we've got the organic, which feels crazy heavy and dense. Oh, wow, five and a quarter pound. And then we have the control, which doesn't feel as dense. Three and three quarters pound. So we have basically a pound and a half increase from the organic. Definitely a result I wasn't expecting. This might be the case where you have doubling up a synthetic fertilizer actually is counterproductive. That's definitely been shown over here with all of this crazy aphid damage. And maybe the organic is just a better solution overall for any soil, at least so far that's what I've noticed. Over here at the end, we have miracle Grow, which was one of the top contenders as well. Let's see what the control looks like. Overall, a pretty solid looking head of cabbage. A little bit of aphids on the back, but nothing too crazy. Then we've got the synthetic one, which has a ton of aphids, but is a bigger cabbage. And then lastly, we've got the organic, which is looking a little bit weird. Let's take a look at that synthetic one first. Definitely has the aphids all over the back and the inside. So in terms of weight, two and a half pounds, not bad. Then we have the organic one. And the reason why I said it looks weird is that the top is kind of folding in on itself. There's definitely a decent amount of aphid pressure on this one. And I'm gonna guess it weighs less than the synthetic. Two and a half pounds, maybe a hair over the other one. And then finally, the control. My guess is this will be the heaviest. It's actually a little bit of aphids, but less than the rest. Three and a half pounds. So that is one where 
The convention that we saw before has been bucked. The traditional nothing added one did the best, but the heaviest cabbage overall was the organic one from the previous section. So let's talk a little bit about why that may be. We've taken a look at all of the cabbages and we've weighed them. And the conclusion, to me at least, is that I would not use synthetic fertilizer. Now that's something I've already sort of believed, but seeing all the insane aphid pressures on the ones that got the synthetic fertilizer just further proved that to me. Now the other thing I took away from this is that organic fertilizer works across all conditions. Even if you have a soil that started off with a synthetic fertilizer, the organic produced the biggest head of cabbage by far and also the densest. So I would always use organics, I would avoid synthetics, and honestly, Follow the directions on the package and you'll probably end up with a big ol' head of cabbage. Now if you want to see the original experiment video where we actually chose these top two, bottom two soils, check out the video over here and good luck in the garden and keep on growing.